Here are three horrific lost episodes of Arthur. The stories do have sort of a conspiracy realm to it. So for any Arthur fans, you may never look at the show the same way again. It all started when I was walking down the street, waving to my neighbors and smiling just to see everybody. And then I started to hear the familiar, catchy song again. I instantly forgot what I was doing, just started listening to the happy lyrics. Every day when you're walking down the street, everybody that you meet... Cut! Cut! You're doing it all wrong, you idiot! Wh what the hell are you talking about? You're not walking in time! Listen to the beat and the rhythm! Got it? Oh, oh, what do you mean, sir? <sighs> Jeez, no wonder you idiots are going extinct. Synchronize your walking to the music. Make your right foot hit the ground on one and three, or two and four. I don't care, just pick one and stick to it! Uh, okay, sir, I get it now. Now. Go back to the start point, and remember, if we can't get this done by the end of the day, you're gonna be stuck shooting this intro forever! I jogged back to the starting point to the route I was supposed to walk. What he said about being here forever didn't fully register, till I started taking multiple takes for making the littlest minute mistakes in the shoot. When the song started playing, I tried to focus on it as much as I could, and walk with it like I was told to, but I have to admit, this was all starting to take the joy out of the song. I just tried to sing along with it in my head, and act like it was my song that I knew by heart. Every day when you're walking down the street, everybody that you meet has an original point of view. And I say, hey! HEY! You stupid, stupid aardvark! Stop moving your lips! But I, I wasn't, I, I was just- You think I don't see you mumbling your lips? You better get back to the start point and start again before I stick my fresh pair of Nikes up your- oh, Okay, okay, sir. I I'll do it right away. Please, just, just let me go. He shoved me to the ground. I took a moment to collect myself and swallow the lump in my throat. Then, I picked myself up and started walking back to the start again. Pick up the pace or I'll break your back like how I did to your mother in high school! I began to put some pep in my step and sprinted back. When I got there, I had to turn away and wipe the tears from my eyes before they streamed down my face. I took a deep breath and turned to face the route, then waited for the call. I hate this so much. Why the hell am I even here? I just... I just have to keep going. I then heard someone call out, ACTION! And I did my thing. I wasn't enjoying any of it. I was faking everything. I guess that's why they call it acting. Most of all, I was already starting to hate the stupid song. Every day when you're walking down the street, everybody that you meet has an original point of view. And I say, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. If you could learn to work and play, and get along with each other. You idiot! You're riding the bike too slow! You're cutting out the damn frame! Who in the hell hired the imbecile that can't even ride a damn bike properly? I think I was already half brain dead at that point. I was just doing what I was told, but I wasn't really all there. I was just walking to this really strange song, doing odd things here and there as my mind slipped further and further away. Slowly but surely, we progressed through the script, and I found myself doing various things on all kinds of stages, but no matter how hard I tried, I always seemed to do everything wrong. You gotta listen to your heart, listen to the beat, listen to the rhythm, the rhythm of the street. Open up your eyes, open up your ears, get together and make things better by working together. This is the last time I ever want to work with a piece of shit like you! You're supposed to frown in this scene! Why can't you bring me the same energy you showed us in the audition? Stop!
start again! But at one moment, it all became too much to bear. I collapsed, feeling like I couldn't breathe. I was on the ground clutching my chest from the ruthless amount of takes he was putting me through. All the time spent being yelled at, humiliated, and forced to perform to unrealistic standards I couldn't even understand. Without a break, without food or water, and that damn song played through the whole thing, taunting me with all these happy things I was supposed to play out while I was being treated like a dirty animal. What a wonderful kind of day. Hey! Hey, DW. Hey! Uh, uh. Cut! What the hell is wrong with you? Your glasses are supposed to fly off your face when you fall back, you idiot! From the top, again! I don't want to keep falling off that ledge. It's breaking my back. I can't do this anymore. Oh. You poor, rotten thing. Props! I need tape and a stapler! ASAP! No, please, just let me go home. Let me go! Help! I learned there was nothing that director wouldn't do to his actors to keep them working. No matter the cost to the people inside, he didn't see us as people at all. Just fleshy dolls that he could command as he pleased. Eventually, I knew there was just no way out of it. He made sure of that, too. Every day when you're walking down the street. Every day when you're walk. Every day when- Every day- Every day- Every day- Every day- Every day-, every day, every day, every day. It's all hazy now. I can't even trace back how I got here. All I remember was sitting on the rim of this huge purple circle. The top of a pit that went down so far I couldn't even see the bottom. Everything around me was just pure darkness. There was this giant screen, like from a movie theater. But at first, I couldn't even tell it wasn't real. I thought I was actually looking through the walls of my house and into my living room. Laying on the carpet in the middle of the floor was DW. And as usual, she was reading one of her magazines. That's when I called out to her. Hey, DW! Hey! Her loud voice startled me. I staggered backwards, trying to catch myself. Then, slipped and tumbled forward, falling straight down into the purple pit. And that's when everything went dark. Whatever happened immediately after is just a blank space for me. Sometime later, I came to, disoriented and an excruciating pain all over my body. I had no idea where I was. The space I was in made no sense to me. It was purple, just like the top, and it had four walls and a square that rose up to dizzying heights. But other than that, there was nothing else. No windows, no door, no furniture, not even a light. I could only see because there was this eerie glow emanating from the walls. I struggled to my feet, every bone in my body in agony, and hobbled over to the wall, hoping that it was just a sheet or something that there would be something on the other side, but there wasn't. It was just a solid wall. There wasn't anything for me to climb on either. It was all completely smooth and featureless, like some kind of demented prison. I then tried squeezing myself into the corner and shimmying up the wall. I might have gotten about six inches off the ground before I slipped, and no matter how many times I attempted it, I couldn't get any higher than I could by jumping. Every time I failed, the pain in my body grew and the direness of my situation became increasingly obvious. At a loss, I collapsed and began to cry. <laughs> hey! Somebody! Help me! Is anybody there? Please! My voice just echoed. Above me was the purple circle from which I'd fallen, looming over my head, mocking me. After a few minutes, I dried my tears and picked myself up, then went for a different approach. I thought maybe I could just beat my way through these walls, so I punched and kicked and charged into it, putting all my rage into every strike. But each time I was deflected, and all my efforts were for nothing. It's not real. This is just a dream. A nightmare. That's all. None of this is real. I'll wake up soon, and I'll run and hug Mom. Help! Can anybody help me? Arthur... Arthur... Is that you, Arthur? Hey! Who's there? Where are you? Answer the question, you dumb rat! Hey, I'm not a rat! But you are, Arthur, aren't you? What? Who are you? Let me out of here before I call the cops! <laughs> I wanna play a game! I looked all over for where that voice was coming from, 
But it was so echoey in that room that it was no use. I was starting to think that I would be trapped in this dark room while this sicko tormented me for the rest of my existence. There was no way to keep track of how much time had passed. There was no sunlight. Just the same level of constant purple darkness. But it must have been days before that voice came back. By then, I was so hungry and thirsty. I was starving. And things were getting so bad. I didn't even have a bucket. I had to choose a corner of the room to be the corner that I did my business in. While I huddled in the opposite corner waiting for nothing. Hey Arthur, you hungry Ed? Yes, yes, please, I'm starving. Give me some food. I'll do anything, I swear. You swear you'll do anything? <laughs> Yes, anything. Well, all right then. If you want food, do 100 jumping jacks. Wait, really? That's it? Do 100 jumping jacks now! Before I give this delicious food away! Okay, okay. One, two, three, four, five. I was expecting to be put through a lot worse. But then again, it made sense. There was nothing around me that I could do anything with. And honestly, being in there with nothing to do was maddening. It was uninterrupted, solitary confinement, so I would have gladly done a lot worse just for the stimulation. Little did I know, the jumping jacks were only the beginning. 100! There, I did it! Now give me something to eat! Just then, something got tossed in from the other side of the hole. It splattered onto the ground and I rushed over to it. It was a hunk of meat still on the bone. Some kind of rare steak, I thought, but I had no idea. It could have been anything. I devoured it regardless and sucked the fat off the bone chewing on the sinew at the joint and then beating it on the ground to break it open and suck out the marrow. It was the best thing I'd ever tasted. From then on, that was the routine. I would be forced to sit in nothingness for hours upon hours, biting my nails and picking at the walls. And then, after waiting for eternity, my captor would give me a stupid, ridiculous task, each one worse than the last. There was even a time where he made me do a humiliating dance and threatened not to feed me if I didn't do it for an hour straight. Hey! Can I please sit? My knees can't handle this dance anymore! Dance! 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 I had no choice. It was that or starvation. And each time, the reward was the same. A slightly different cut from the same mysterious animal. Usually still attached to the bow. Not seasoned with anything. Just strips and chunks of raw flesh. But they were delicious. Of course, I started looking forward to it. Hey! How long do I have to keep doing this? When am I gonna get out of here? Maybe after you clean out my freezer. <laughs> and I say, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. Where you can learn to walk and play. And get along with each other. I've always loved winter more than any other season. I like to go out into the backyard and make a dozen snow forts, snowballs, and other random snow sculptures. Depending on how soft the snow was. Recently though, there's been a stain on my enjoyment of winter, and it's all my brother Arthur's fault. There was a snowball that I used to keep in my freezer that reminded me of a sentimental day. But I know that four-eyed pig took it. A dirty liar. I know he took my snowball. I can't imagine what he wanted with it, except to torment me. I'll never forgive him. I don't even like leaving my room anymore. My family is like a bunch of monsters. Whenever I go into the kitchen, I feel like Arthur is always sitting there, stuffing his face with all the food in the house, and he never has anything nice to say to me. Just mean things. Hey, DW, have you decided to stop hiding from us yet? No, I'm just going to play in the snow. You better not come with me, you snowball thief. Oh my god, is that snowball all you care about? Come on, DW, grow up already. That was my favorite snowball, and you probably ate it because you thought it was vanilla ice cream, you big fat pig. Hey! All right already, what's going on in here? Mom, Arthur's picking on me again. Why? What's he doing that's so bad? I told you he took my snowball, and now he's rubbing it in my face. Arthur, is that true? No, I never took her snowball. She's lying. No, he's lying. He's a dirty, rotten liar, and I hate him. Now, DW, that's no way to talk to your brother. We've been over this snowball crap a million times already. It's snowing outside, so there's no need to cry and moan about a silly snowball when you can go and make a hundred more in the backyard. 
But it won't be the same. Shut up! Just go outside and make another snowball, you whiny little brat! How many times do I have to deal with this stupid snowball crap? I don't want to go anymore! I don't care what you want! Get out of my sight before I get my Louis Vuitton belt and make LV signs all over your stinking ass! <laughs> that means go to your room, DW. Don't test me, little boy! Stupid fat bastard, eating all my food. I should have never made either of those little twerps. I hate you! I hate you more! I didn't care what any of them said. I only went back to my room because I forgot to put on my coat before going out into the snow. But on my way there, I noticed Arthur's door was just the slightest bit open. Enough for me to see his desk. I stopped and peeked in. And legit saw my favorite snowball half melted onto the same plate sitting there in his room. Hey! That snake, he snuck up behind me. He probably put it where I could see it on purpose. What are you doing stupid inside my room? Uh, oh, uh, nothing. Nothing at all. I was just wondering if you'd like to go outside and play in the snow with me? <laughs> like I'd ever want to play with you. Why couldn't mom have just taken a plan B? I got my winter clothes on and went outside to the backyard. I always felt so much better out there than I did trapped inside with those horrible people, no matter what the weather was like. I wanted to build a snowman that day, since snowballs have been ruined for me. Of course, a snowman starts with a big snowball on the bottom and then smaller ones on top of it. I was just about to start putting on the snowman's head when I started to feel like I was being watched. I looked up to Arthur's window and realized he was watching me from his room. I got mad and chucked a snowball at his window. It exploded into powder. But he didn't even flinch. He just closed the blinds. That's when I heard loud footsteps ascending from the staircase. And then out came Arthur, grilling me right in the face. Dora Winifred! Dora Winifred! Dora Winifred! Leave me alone or I'm calling Mr. Rapburn! What the hell is he gonna do? Give me a D on my next exam? I thought he already gave you the D. Why are you little? I was terrified. He didn't even look like my brother. He looked like the most evil monster I've ever seen. He just kept looking at me with these horrific eyes. I backpedaled and armed myself with another snowball. I didn't have anything to defend myself. So in a panic, I thought I could throw some snow into his eyes, but GIVE ME THAT SNOWBALL! He lunged at me, grabbing my wrist and biting the snowball right out of my hand. He almost took a finger with it too, and devoured it like a rabid animal. As soon as he was done, he turned on the half-finished snowman. While he was distracted with it, I ran inside and hid under the kitchen table. Arthur flew in behind me, stomping around and calling my name, taunting me. Dora Winifred, where are you? I wanna eat all your snowballs! Found you! <laughs> That's when he found me hiding under the table. He flipped the table over with so much force that it broke in half when it landed on the ground. I didn't know what else to do, so I ran as fast as I could into the backyard again. Arthur was right behind me, running faster than he ever had, like it wasn't even him controlling his body anymore. He grabbed me by the hair and yanked me back, spun me around and then held me up by the collar, an inch from his face. So close I could smell the stench of his breath. He opened up his mouth so wide that I could see all of his teeth were jagged and sharp like a monster. And right there, I knew he was about to bite my head off. Stop! Wait! Y you want snowballs, right? Look over there! Right there! There's the bottom of the snowman still! That's a huge snowball! Won't you eat that instead and spare me, please, Arthur? <clears throat> he grunted without saying a word and threw me aside. By the time I picked myself up and looked at him, he was already stuffing the entire giant snowball into his mouth to devour in one bite. He started to chew, and at first, there was the crunch of snow, but then, the crunch of something else. Blood began to ooze from his lips. He looked so confused. It was funny, really, how easily he fell for it. How does your favorite dog in the whole world taste, Arthur? That's right, I rolled up a little old pal into that snowman, because I knew you wouldn't be able to help yourself around my snowballs. You absolute moron. On. You should have just admitted what you did. Then maybe your best friend would still be alive. No, no. Ah!